So for genre, uh, the question here is asking you to analyze your thriller title sequence um, and to think about how it is similar and different to other films within the same genre um, and how by comparing your film to those other films in the genre, you can help, um, you can find a new way of understanding its significance. So the first film to look at, uh, theorist rather, to look at is Dudley Andrew. And he talks about genre being a blueprint and also a label. So in terms of it being a blueprint, Andrew's arguing that um, filmmakers, when they set out to make a film, one of the first decisions they make is what genre it will be in. Uh, and he argues that that decision then influences heavily um, all of the decisions the filmmakers make. Um, makes. It gives them um, a list of ingredients to include, it gives them a recipe to follow. It's a, by doing so, they're using a tried and tested formula that has previously been successful uh, and that by doing this, this enables them to um, reduce the risk of the film bombing. It helps them um, have greater confidence that the film will be a success as, sim as um, other films that have followed this blueprint have previously been successful. So uh, when applying this to your thriller, um, look at how have you followed the conventions um, of films within your um, thriller subgenre. So for example, if you've made an action thriller, have you um, indicated there will be car chases, shootouts, fist fights? Are there good guys and bad guys or heroes and villains? Um, what are the um, typical conventional ingredients you have included? Perhaps you've included conventional settings, um, such as, you know, uh, murder detectives office. Um, so yeah, have a look at how you've uh, followed those conventions, um, show where you followed them, and um, argue that this has enabled you to um, increase the chances of your film being successful. Andrew also argues that genre acts as a label uh, and by this he means it's a way of um, labelling the film in the marketing. So um, for example um, it's a way of indicating to the audience, it's like a shortcut uh, to indicate to the audience what kind of film this is. Um, I'm sure you can look at a poster of uh, films that are going to be in the classrooms around you you're going to be quickly be able to look at that poster, identify what kind of movie it is quite easily, and genre is um, a factor that helps you do that. So um, it, uh, genre, by marketing a film as belonging to a particular subgenre or genre, uh, by indicating that to the audience through the marketing material, it helps uh, communicate to them what the film's about, it helps them um, select films, uh, that they are more likely to enjoy if they're a fan of that, uh, other films similar to it. The second theory to look at is Roland Barthes, um, and he argues that two different types of pleasure are at play uh, when an audience is consuming a film or a product within a genre. So the first pleasure is called plaisir. Um, plaisir is um, a type of a mundane and everyday pleasure and um, this pleasure is derived when an audience's expectations are fulfilled. So um, when audiences go and watch thrillers, uh, I would argue um, that one of the most obvious things that they are expecting, the pleasure they expect, is to be scared, to be thrilled, to be in suspense, to be on the edge of their seat. Um, and this is a key part of um, that expected pleasure. So when they turn up to um, watch that thriller and where your film, so apply it to your film, think about how you have generated suspense, argue that this is um, you know, likely to um, give the audience um, a pleasure of having their expectations fulfilled. Look at stuff like non-diegetic soundtracks, look at stuff like um, different um, synchronous or ambient sounds raised in the sound mix. Um, that they create tension. Uh, look at the use of camera to deny inf information to the audience around the surroundings, to put them in the position of the protagonists. Look at the mise-en-scene. Have you used isolated or um, entrapping um, locations, um, cellars, attics, or, you know, for trapping locations, or otherwise the woods or abandoned houses. 
um, you know, how have you, uh, or, uh, you know, any, any um, locations that are either isolated or in traffic, um, these are uh, very likely to um, generate suspense as the audience fear for the character's safety. Have a look also at the editing. Um, have you used long takes to draw out the tension and slow the story down? Um, alternatively, have you used fast, um, fast takes, uh, you know, fast pace editing, short takes rather, um, to build up the uh, tension, um, perhaps in a chase scene or something like that. Um, so yes, that's Plaisir. Have a look at where in your thriller does it build up suspense to the audience. That's likely to please them. That's what they've paid for their ticket. The other pleasure um, Barts discusses is jouissance. Um, jouissance is a more, uh, he says it's a more intense pleasure. And he says that audience get this pleasure when their expectations are disrupted. So this is when they get something that they weren't expecting, something different to the other films within that genre. Um, one way, a uh, common way in which many thrillers do this is through... Um, hybridization and that's kind of mixing together two genres or, um, or, or taking a kind of a, a typical genre plot and narrative structure um, and moving that to a new setting that's a way of uh, building a bit of difference a USP a unique selling point for your film when an audience watches that film and gets something new and exciting something different to what they expected this gives them a, an intense pleasure so have a look in your thriller, is there anything different to what the audience expected? If so, maybe you can argue this year will be um, given something special that they enjoy, something strange and surprising, and um, something which gives them a more intense pleasure to just any old film they expected. Jouissance is very important um, within um, any genre because, you know, if um, an audience only receives plaisir, if every film rigidly follows the same conventions, the, uh, the genre as a whole will become tired and dated and the audience will lose interest in that genre. If your film, so when you're applying it to your thriller, I mean, many of your thrillers probably don't contain jouissance because you probably, you know, you've just started making films and you thought, you know, let's follow the tried and tested formula. It's probably a pretty smart move to do. Um, so if your film doesn't contain jouissance, I think it would be also possible for you to argue that... Um, for thriller films, it might not be so essential that a film breaks out from the genre and does something interesting or new. One of the um, pleasures, actually, of thriller films and certain thriller genres, like, for example, the, the slasher thriller, the teen slasher thriller, um, or the horror thriller, um, is actually one of the pleasures is when the audience understand, they recognise uh, visual cues and audio cues, and they understand through familiarity with the narrative structures exactly where the story is going. Part of the pleasure is knowing in advance where the story is going, and that obviously helps to build the suspense for the audience as they anticipate what is to come. So perhaps the the um, how formulaic films within the thriller genre are is in fact part of the pleasure. If you haven't got three songs, that's maybe something you could argue. The final theorist um, to look at for genre is Rick Altman. And he argues that there are two different ways, two different kind of scales of analysing genre. And the first one he calls the semantic approach. This is basically um, listing films that are similar by... Uh, morning, girls. This is basically uh, listing films that are similar um, by noting the shared ingredients they have, looking at the iconography, saying that, wow, all of the, we can call all of these films a Western because they're all set in America um, around the same time period. They all have saloon with the swing doors, horses, cowboy sheriffs. Um, and he says, um, this is okay, it's good, because we can uh, include lots of films within that. But he says it doesn't really lead us into a deep understanding of the genre and its significance. The other scale um, that Altman talks about is the syntactic approach, and here he says we're looking at a more um, we're looking at a bigger scale of those films and thinking about them in a more uh, looking at their narrative structures, looking at the themes they deal with, um, and he says that by doing this, looking at the audience and the way the audience like to respond and how films um, are uh, linked to the audience. And he says that by doing this, you can um, understand the films in a more interesting way. 
But he says a problem with this approach is that it kind of it encourages people just to focus on a small group of films and ignore other films within the genre that don't exactly fit with their argument. You don't need to know any of that stuff. You'll be probably relieved today. The key thing Altman is saying is there's two different scales we can look at the film. The semantic approach, which looks at it on a micro level, listing the shared iconography. And the syntactic approach, which looks more in terms of the scale of the narrative, the audience response and the themes that the films deal with. So the interesting thing about thrillers, and this is how you should apply it to your thriller, is that across the whole thriller genre, there isn't a shared iconography, there isn't a shared set of semantics. A horror thriller is going to look very different to a political thriller. One is going to have blood squirting across the, the screen, vampires, um, and the other one is going to have uh, secret dossiers, politicians, uh, clandestine meetings. So these films are not like a Western. They, they don't all look exactly the same on the poster. They're going to look totally different. So that's one interesting thing about thrillers. They don't have a shared set of semantics. However, on a syntactic level, looking at the kind of big picture, thinking about um, the narrative structures, thinking about the themes, thinking about the, um, the characters, we definitely can see familiarities even though one of our films has got blood square across the screen and the other's got secret meetings and politicians, there certainly is a familiarity in terms of the characters and the structure of the narrative. There will be something posing a threat um, in, in a thriller. There's always something posing a threat. So if it's a sci-fi thriller, that might be an asteroid heading towards Earth. If it's a horror thriller, it might be a vampire. Um, if it's a conspiracy thriller, it might be some kind of, um, you know evil corporation okay so even though these things are different they obviously they look different a vampire does look different to an asteroid or a big company they're fulfilling the same role within the narrative they're posing a threat um, equally there's always going to be something under threat in the narrative so you know in the case of the sci-fi thriller that might be the whole of the human civilization that's going to be you know smashed up by this asteroid in a horror thriller, it might be a small neighbourhood in a, you know middle of nowhere America. So there's always going to be something um, posing a threat. There's always going to be something under threat, and of course there's going to be something fighting against that threat. So you know in a, a crime thriller that might be a murder detective. In a sci-fi thriller that might be astronauts. Um, you know in a horror thriller it, it, it might be some uh, plucky teenager. Uh, so we've got this familiarity in terms of the narrative structure, the function the characters play within that narrative. Um, something posing a threat, something under threat, something fighting against that threat. Show how your thriller uh, fulfills that and contrast it to a thriller from a different subgenre, which is very different. Um, but show that even though they look very different, the iconography is different, the syntactic level is very similar. The other um, key way to think about the syntactic level is think about the audience. And what we can say across the thriller genre as a whole is that even though they don't look very similar, certainly these films are intended to provoke the same audience response. Um, that's a response of um, being uh, in suspense, feeling scared. Uh, it's a physical response rather than a mental response. Um, getting goose pimples, gripping the arms of your seat, hiding behind your popcorn. Um, all of these thrillers as a whole, whether they are a sci-fi thriller or a political thriller, are for the audience um, about um, feeling scared in a safe environment, um, the, the Friday night thrill. It's a form of entertainment. Um, and um, all of these films, however they look, whoever the characters are, they're all designed to create suspense.